welcome her this morning, Laurel James. Welcome everyone to the introduction of interiorology. I'm so proud to be able to share this with you as I've been working on this project for 10 years. I'm hoping to change the way you might think about interior design this morning. I will be sharing with you how interiorology came to be, what it is, and walk you through an experience of what each principle means. So let's start with a little bit more about me because the process came into play by my experience with my professional and my personal life. I am a fourth generation Floridian from St. Petersburg. The picture above was taken on St. Pete Beach in the 1930s. It is of my grandmother's family on my father's side. My grandmother, who's around five years old in the picture, has been a big influence to me. She is an artist, a poet, and a naturalist. Her homes were always so in tune with the outdoor environments that she lived in. My grandfather and father were also builders, developers, and architects in the area. So I grew up around a family of designers and artists whose main focus in life was their home. Every summer, I would spend time at my grandparents' summer farm in North Carolina. They made wonderful gardens, introduced us to the local culture, and all the nature that was around us. My grandmother, who was also into self-help and spirituality, uh, would, I remember we would sit and lay down on the floor in the living room floor as a teenager um, with my brothers, and she would want to try out meditation on us. <laughs> she would ask us to tune in to our spiritual sides. And I thought it was strange at the time, but I realized later she was really on the art of inner interior awareness. Sorry about the glasses. <laughs> I am married, as Susan said. I'm in a blended second family with three teenage boys. This was a picture of a very happy day for the boys. And I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional because it brings up such a sweet memory of us bringing our dog home from the Humane Society. It brings up a lot of emotion for me because my husband and I consciously and intentionally took our time and a lot of love to blend our boys together over the last 10 years. One of the things we did that was a little different was in, when they were in their formative years, we had two houses side by side to one another, two cute little yellow houses right next door. And we wanted to take our time to really blend and merge the family. And a lot of you might be kind of wrapping your head about, around that, like, how did that work? What'd you do? So my friends said, maybe I need to write a second book about it later. <laughs> so my living spaces have always been an ongoing experiment of how to create a new and different way of creating a home. Just as a flower needs the right environment to bloom, we need the right home in which to flourish. Think of a flower. It just is. When growing in the right place, it creates and feeds other insects, birds, and butterflies. It has a fragrance that is memorable beyond its life. <coughs> How can you just be your authentic self in an ever-changing landscape of life? How can you find home in today's world of fast-paced technology and communication? How can you be happy, healthy, and flourish in an ever-changing home life? Interiorology is the art of applying physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual awarenesses in your home. It is about the health and well-being of you and your environment in this ever-changing world. 
It is a series of tools based on internal and external exploration that leaves you with a map to guide any design project from the smallest adjustments of your existing space all the way to a new home project. This map can be used to go self-decorate or it can be given to your architect, interior designer, and builder. The map will give you and or your design team a clearer, deeper look at who you are and your needs for starting any design for your living space. The interiology sessions and classes are designed to help you better reflect yourself and your home. It is also helps you move through any transition of life. Just as our lives change, our homes also need to keep changing to better support us. About 11 years ago, I was going through a couple of life transitions and changes. Around that time, I had an interior design firm on First Street here in Sarasota, and we worked on many exciting projects, such as the Burns Court Villas. We also worked on universal design, aging in place projects like this kitchen below, and many, picture, many other private residences in the Sarasota area. The two major life stage changes that were happening around that time for me was I was going through a divorce, so I needed to find a new home for my son and I, as well as I needed to scale my business down and move it into my house because of the recession in our market. So I acquired an old 1950s house that needed remodeling badly. And I remember sitting on the floor of this house it was practically empty. My son and I owned two beds and an old sofa. It was stark white walls surrounding me like a blank artist's canvas. It felt really scary. I sat there with paint samples spread out around me and I just started to cry. I didn't know where to start decorating my home. And here I was, an interior designer who had picked hundreds of paint colors for hundreds of people, and I couldn't do it for myself. I didn't know where to start or what to choose because my identity was changing in both my professional and my personal life. So I thought about how I was going through those transitions and how I walked my clients through them. This was the birthplace of interiorology for me. To get unstuck, I started thinking about what did I do with my past clients to help them transform into their next phase in their home. Now, one of my favorite parts of interior design process with my clients was the getting to know you phase. Growing up, I either wanted to do something in the psychological, spiritual world or do something in fashion and interior design. So when I became an interior designer, I had the great excuse to combine my interest of sociology with design. I used to ask many questions to my clients to help them design their homes. Who were they? Where were they going in life? Why were they wanting to change their living space? How could I design for them what, that would help them thrive in their new home? Now, sometimes when I used to work with my clients, they would be afraid to tell me their inner lives and their not so glamorous <coughs> sides of themselves. I had to softly ask questions that were so important to the design process. I had to gently try to peel back the deeper layers of the onion of my client. The times my clients only wanted to stick to the surface of their lives, I could only design for them on the surface. But when the clients would open up and let me go deeper, the design process was easier and the end result was more in alignment with who that client was becoming. Interiorology is a set of universal principles that I've created. Each color and word represents one of them on the screen. This set of principles in a session or class helps you and or your design team move forward. It is a new preliminary piece of the design process that is deeper, richer, and experiential. 
It is great to do before beginning any design project or when you're going through life changes and just need a place to start. When you're in a session or class, they are full of sensory discovery experiences. It is a place to play and find inner reflections of yourself and your home. And with the map you receive upon completion, it will leave you with an outline of your aesthetic preferences, your architectural style, and positive visualizations for you and your family to shift your living space. It will give you and or your design team a direction of who you are and what you need to help you thrive in your home. Part of the process is about body, mind, and spirit of home. When I was doing research on how our environments are affected within us, chakra centers came up for me as an interesting concept of home and lives and how the energies and emotions relate to them. Other parts of the process came from eco-psychology, environmental design, and sustainability. Now a lot of people have asked me, how does feng shui come into play in all this? A sense of it comes in in terms of connection with nature, the different aspects of our lives relating to their Bagua map, and the intentional placement in the mind and home. Here again are the interiology principles. We are now going to take a glance at what each means and how you can apply them to you and your home. Walk with me on a journey through each principle. Come take a look at what each one of these can give you to help you discover a living environment that reflects the authentic you. So clearing the space in you and your home is the starting point for the principles. It is about taking breathing time and space for yourself each day. I start my classes and sessions with breathing and meditation. It grounds us. It clears our thoughts and opens our minds and hearts to things we would like to imagine for our home life. Making time to just be is the first step. It gives you time to clear your mind, hear the essence of your inner self, and focus on what you need. If our minds are not clear and our environments are not either, it's hard to concentrate, imagine, and see what we need for our home. I had a client who was not finding time and space to clear her thoughts in her home with her family. She had a home full of sound clutter. The challenge was she needed a quiet space in which to unwind, but there was a television or a computer on in every main room of her house. We settled the noise down by having the family agree not to have more than one TV on in the main area. And I also suggested low volume headphones for those using a computer that shared the same room. We also immediately pulled an existing chair and ottoman into her bedroom, providing a much needed space where she could close the door and silence the noise clutter. There she could take a moment to breathe, clear her thoughts, and be at peace. And when she had a clear mind, she was able to know where her outer distractions needed to be placed every day. Now, pretend you are my client and I am your interiologist. So let's begin with clearing some space for you. How are you feeling right now? Are you feeling stressed? Are you feeling any tension in your body? Are you feeling like you can even be here in the moment? Now get a number in your head from one to 10. One being you really feel stressed and 10 being you feel perfectly balanced and relaxed. Do you have that number in your head? I know mine's about a three right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a short guided meditation. I'm gonna ask you questions only for you to help you visualize and imagine it. So no answering out loud. This is your own inner journey. I invite you to close your eyes. Close your eyes and get comfortable in this moment. 
Put both feet on the floor. Breathe in and breathe out and let go of the distractions and tension you may be feeling in your body. Breathe deeply in and breathe out, feeling your shoulders dropping and relaxing. Breathe in deep one more time and breathe out. Feel connected to your seat, your feet on the ground, connected to the earth. Imagine you are in your favorite spot in nature. Maybe you are in the mountains or the beach or maybe a forest or meadow. It is a clear, sunny day. The air is crisp. Feel the sunshine warmly on your face and the soft, sweet breeze on your skin. What are you doing? Are you sitting or walking or standing? Be aware of your breathing. What do you smell in this natural environment you are in? What kind of lovely aromas fill the air? The fragrance you smell is enticing to you as if you almost can taste it. Is it sweet, citrusy, spicy, or earthy? As you are in this natural space, what do you see around you? What kind of view are you gazing at? Is it an expansive, open view? Or is it a cozy view of things near you? Can you reach out and touch anything? Does it feel soft, textured, alive? What do you hear outside in your place in nature? Do you hear wind or water moving? animals or birds. Inhabit your space here in nature, taking it in with all your senses, smelling it, seeing it, feeling it, and hearing it. Linger here for a moment. It is time to slowly come back into this room. Maybe wiggle your toes and your fingers and take some long, deep breaths as you open your eyes. Welcome back. <laughs> now that you're back, ask yourself once again, how are you feeling right now? Do you feel any more relaxed? Do you feel more peaceful? Are you more connected to the present moment? One to 10, how are you feeling? Most likely that number probably went up. One of the various reasons is because connecting yourself and your senses to nature helps you feel better in your surroundings. Another reason you may feel better is because you just took the time to stop, just breathe, and be here for the moment. You plus clearing equals home. Take the time and space to throw away the things that are no longer serving you in your mind and in your living space. Clearing some space for yourself plus finding the time will equal a home that will bring you more clarity and grounding. The things which the child loves remains in the domain of the heart until old age. Bringing your childlike essence back into your life and home is the second principle. When you, do, when you do an interiology session or class with me, we focus on what did you dream about and love to do as a child? How can you bring out your childlike essence back into your home? Maybe add a fun color or something that reminds you of a happy part of your childhood. Consider doing something that you dreamed about or did for fun when you were a child. For example, when I asked the husband of a couple that were doing an interiology session 
the client reflected on how he used to tape pictures of motorcycles, mountains, and beaches, and trucks, and other boy stuff to the bottom of the upper bunk bed that he shared with his brother. He would go to sleep staring at these things he loved and dreamed of doing. Until we had explored memories of his childhood, he had forgotten that he had created this collage. Without knowing it, he was forming his own identity and dreams of who he was becoming for his new space. He had just bought a motorcycle and was traveling between the mountains and the beach. It was delightful to see his face as he contemplated what he was manifesting. We then explored how he could bring these things he loved in his home with his wife. We brought in dark wood tones that reminded him of the woods and mountains. We also brought in orange colors that they both liked from the color of the beach sunsets. You plus essence equals home. Bringing things you loved at your childlike essence back into your heart, plus bringing happy physical treasures from your childhood will create a home that is more playful and nourishing for you. This principle is about balance and noticing where you are today in your life and space for you to know where you need to change things for tomorrow. Consider viewing your home and life from the perspective of what is flowing with ease and what is feeling like it needs to change because you're changing. And an, as an interior designer, clients always came to me because there was some kind of big stage, life stage change, like new jobs, families growing up or expanding, and children just moving away for college or retirement, those kind of things. As an interiologist, we look more deeply at the aspect of your life and where you may be off balance. You have many aspects of your life, like friends, health, career, and many more. How do you keep it all in balance? By noticing and being aware. It's OK when you're off balance. We all are at times. And when you can recognize where you are, you can shift your living spaces for the better. In a class I gave, we looked at what kind of overall life stages were happening in our lives and what life aspects were feeling out of sorts. I asked the participants to mentally walk through each room of their home and see if there were any clues as to what might be off balance. One of the participants contemplated the question and realized that she was in the middle of a life stage change. Her husband had just moved his business into their home. This life stage change necessitated needing more space she also realized that one of her aspects, specifically her romance relationship, was feeling a little off balance. She then imagined walking through her current house. She described piles of office equipment all over, including a, a paper shredder in the master bedroom. <laughs> now I dare say we all, all my clients, including myself, have had some kind of message like this. Her observation led her to an awareness that gave her the direction she needed to get her aspect of her romance relationship back in alignment, as well as finding order to the life stage change of having her husband working from home. A few months later, I visited her home and with joy she showed me her master bedroom. She had moved the things that belonged to her husband's office into a separate space. My client also went to balance out the aspect of her romance relationship by creating the things that would inspire her and her husband in the bedroom. When they, when they first met, they would write love letters to one another. So she created a romance box used to hold these letters and write new ones between them. She also designated a special area in the room to play music and enjoy private moments together. Being aware of where she fell off balance gave her a direction on how to align with her home. You plus balance equals home. Noticing what needs changing will give you and your home the self-awareness to move forward. 
just as a compass helps you find your way, knowing where you are in life plus where you are off balance in your home will lead you in a direction that is on the right path. When you know what you love from nature and bring those elements inside your heart and home, you access what you need to design a home that will flourish and grow. Now the heart of all the principles for me is this one. It's about how to bring nature back into your home and how to bring you back out into nature. My parents named me after a laurel oak tree, so I'm a tree hugger, literally. <laughs> So when I was doing research for my interiorology book, I was really excited about the eco-psychology and the sustainability side of this. I realized I could have made a whole book just out of this topic. One of my favorite articles when I was doing research for the book was a report that was done across the country on the effects of being in artificial environments versus natural ones. It it showed how natural environments make us feel better, more connected to the community, and how we behave nicer. In one of the handful of studies done from the article, one half a group was given a few common household plants and digital pictures of natural landscapes, and the other half were given a more artificial environment with pictures of cityscapes. The natural group by far felt better. It is a proven fact that when we think about nature, see visuals from nature, and are in nature, we feel happier, nicer, and more connected. So, when you're in a class or private session with me, we are exploring what do you love about nature and how can you best incorporate it into your home. A really fun part of the process is the physical exploration. You get to feel, touch, and make natural murals that are expressions of you. It shows you a blueprint of what your preferences are quicker than it ever did for my clients in the interior design process of pulling pictures from magazines. When you bring nature into your home, it encourages you to feel sensory rich from the flowers you breathe, spices you taste, colors you see, and textures you touch, and sounds you hear, your body integrates with the natural world around you. Just as the sun warms your skin on a cold day, connecting with nature brings you peace between your physical sense and your mental self. Nature has fresh air, cleansing rains, and soothing sunshine. It helps you maintain your physical, mental, and emotional self by providing all the elements you need to thrive. You plus nature equals home. Knowing what you love about nature plus bringing nature into your heart and home will help you feel connected and open to keep growing. Some of you may know the classic design phrase, Form follows function. The form of a room cannot take shape until you know the function. In this principle, I am taking it, taking it a step further inside and saying, function cannot form until you know what it is you're feeling to create a living space. How you function in your environment is based on your feelings, preferences, roles, and lifestyle and what forms are needed for you to design or shift your home to support you. When you're doing a session or class together, we look at the subtle differences of who you are. Like these rocks, they are considered a different shade of aqua. We discover together what feelings and needs you have, how you live, and what your desires are for the future. The end result is a clear visualization. Now, Choose one thing that inspires you to learn, grow, or you enjoy. Like, what kind of hobbies do you dream about doing or are you doing currently? And how can you incorporate that feeling into your home if you haven't already? 
I've had many clients moving from other areas of America to buy a vacation home on the beach and or retire here. So a common feeling is wanting to learn more about and enjoy a sense of the water and the beach in their homes and lives. By bringing in aqua colors, like in the bedspread and the, the ceiling color, and bringing in a fountain of water if you're not already located on the water, and having art on the walls that represents the water gives the client a sense of that feeling. There becomes a flow of feeling, function, and form in their space. You plus feeling equals home. Your environment and life flow together, moving on a journey of what you feel, what you do, and how your space functions. How you feel plus how your home feels will bring you a sense of order and peace. All you need to know is within you, the place that feels like home. This principle is about intentional placement. Our values, personalities, and beliefs share the same space with our items, artifacts, and knickknacks. So our placement of our things need to be intentional to bring our homes into alignment. It is about identifying your intentions and how to place a symbol of it in your living space. For example, this, pain, this painting is hanging in our dining room. I painted it. It represents my husband and his two boys and my son and me. My intention in this example is to want us to be together, to be happy, and to feel expansive in our household. The symbols are the two canvas canvases fitting together as one, the subtle smiley faces on the butterflies, and them flying freely in their own direction. As you imagine looking at this expansive scene, think about what are your core values? These are the guiding principles in your life, your beliefs, needs, and desires. Choose just one of these that you feel is important to you in your life right now. Place it with intent in your heart and mind. Consider what it means to you, how it would make you feel, and how it could help you and others in your home life. Then think about how you would physically place something in your home that symbolizes your intention. Placing it in your home with intent can consciously and unconsciously remind you of what you want every time you walk by it. For example, have you ever traveled somewhere and brought back a special item, artifact, or piece of art? When you see that decoration in your home, it can instantly bring back the memory of those travels. If an object can bring to mind a fond memory, so can the intentional placement of your decor of this object. Like a forget-me-not, the decoration can help remind you of your positive intentions. You plus placement equals home. Your values, beliefs, and needs plus the placement of your objects in your physical space will create a heart-centered home. This last principle is the universal idea of interiology. When you look deep in your heart and how your home reflects who you are and who you're becoming, a clearer, cleaner living space will emerge. By being aware of your true self, living from your heart and reflecting it into your surroundings, you are able to flourish and shine. In turn, your life can be clarified and supported by the environment you have created. I encourage you to go home with all you have heard today and see your living space with fresh eyes. See it in you as in a relationship that is ever changing. What might your environment be telling you that you need to shift in your life? And what would you like to change about your living space that would help you thrive? I told a class to do just that, this and I got an email back one day on how my client went home, took a new look around. She had a treadmill in her bedroom with clothes that were hanging all over it. 
she knew that that was the direct, direct sign from her home telling her she didn't, she didn't have her health aspect in balance. She moved that machine outside on the porch and started walking and running again. It was a simple change that put her back in alignment with her home and life. You plus heart equals home. You plus heart, your heart-centered space equals a space that feels like home. Interiology is a key that opens the door to finding a space that is in alignment with you in this ever-changing world. Now you can see the importance of where we began our talk with this phrase, just as a flower needs the right environment to bloom, we need the right home in which to flourish. My hope is that I left you with a fresher, more introspective way to see interior design and how incorporating the principles of interiology can help you find ways to make your home a more authentic reflection of you. Thank you all for coming.